that our garden is starting to shut down and a lot of times you might be pruning this stuff to potentially take to a compost pile but I want to talk to you about something that we discovered here in our garden um, and some people might think that it's actually a new cultivar or something like that but it is not what we're dealing with here that we've identified on our echinacea is a disease um, that's actually a pathogen called aster yellows um, you can see that this flower has kind of a witch's broom effect where it's got multiple um, stems that are coming out of it. They're usually thinner stems and you can see it's kind of got stunted growth on it. Also the flowers, they, they tend not to actually ever turn to a color. They tend to be light green so you won't ever get those flowers on there. Now, I know there's a lot of different cultivars, especially on different um, species within the Asteraceae family that you might think, hey, this is kind of a unique looking cultivar that I've got. But be aware that this is caused by actually a pathogen that is spread by a leaf hopper. So we did actually take a sample of this plant, this echinacea into our OSU diagnostic lab and did get a positive identification for aster yellows. Um, so we do know that we need to remove this out of a garden. Now it is a leaf hopper that spreads the pathogen. And once the pathogen um, gets inside that plant, it actually is basically throughout that whole plant from the flowers all the way down to the roots. So it's not something that you can actually just cut out and hope that it gets better. Um, there is no cure for this uh, disease. So it, to prevent it from spreading, you wanna make sure that you dig it out of the ground and go ahead and get it out of the garden so that it's not there for other leaf hoppers to feed on and continue to spread that pathogen. So if you don't remove it, it can survive in the crown of the plant and the roots of the plant. So go ahead, dig up all of that plant. Um, because that pathogen is still viable, as long as the plant is green, um, you want to make sure that you then either bury it in your compost pile or put it in a plastic bag or burn it so that it's not available as a green plant for leaf hoppers to still feed on. Now, once that plant tissue actually is dead, then you don't have to worry about that pathogen anymore. So if in a compost file, if it's buried, um, it will break down and you don't have to worry about that pathogen spreading to other plants that you later put your compost on. The other thing is, is as long as you remove the crown and the roots of this whole plant out of the garden, you also don't have to worry about any dead um, a tissue that might still remain plant debris that might still remain on the surface of the soil because again it's dead so that pathogen is dead. Now aster yellows as the name might imply does um, affect a lot of plants in the asteraceae or composite family. Um, a lot of those that have the daisy or sunflower look to them like daisies, rubecchia, echinaceas, You'll often see them on there. However, there's over 300 different species that are susceptible to get aster yellows, including uh, carrots, garlic, tomatoes, and even some of our grain crops are also susceptible to aster yellows. So be aware of it. And they all kind of take on a little bit different form. But again, you'll usually see this kind of witch's broom effect. Um, and you'll see some pell uh, coloring Sometimes the color will even turn white, if not red and purple on the foliage, and it'll kind of have a stunning growth. Now we also saw some marigolds that look kind of similar to some of these same symptoms. And so we actually tested it. They also tested positive for aster yellows. So, um, and those have already gotten removed out of the garden now at this point because they were quickly fading. Um, and again, they had that stunted leaf um, as well as some uh, yellowing and almost whitish foliage on that plant as well. There was another plant though that also um, has been grabbing my attention, although I've seen this over the last couple of years, and that's a liatris plant. Um, so I noticed it last year and then I noticed it again this year, which made me a little bit curious about it. Um, and so we did test it as well, and it came back negative for aster yellows. Um, and in fact, what we're seeing on that liatris is something that's just called fasciation. Fasciation is just a physiological disorder that occurs when the, the cells start growing erratically. And so it is not a disease or anything that is spread. It's not anything that you have to can be concerned about. And in fact, you usually only see it um, on occasion and it doesn't reoccur on the same plant. So the fact that I saw it again on the liatris uh, this year is what kind of made me question it a little bit, but it was negative. Um, so it is just fasciation. And so we can leave that plant in the garden and just kind of 
creative, enjoy it for its unique display that it offers. Now, fasciation again can occur on a lot of different plants. And in fact, um, forsythia is one that you may see it more often reoccur on it. So again, it's another one of those plants that are just predisposed to um, genetically get it more often. Um, but you will see it on a lot of different plants. And this is why it's important when you're kind of going through your garden this fall and you see anything that's curious and whether you should remove it or go ahead and leave it, this is why it's important to get a proper diagnosis. And you can always check with your local extension office by giving them pictures of something that you see is kind of different, or you can actually take in samples and they'll be able to send that to the OSU Plant Diagnostic Lab for positive identification. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.